Nita. And I'm Sinead. And this week we're talking about some really unique silky sauce that you might not have even known existed. into the um, dirt and to mm -hmm. cut those root barriers uh, anywhere that is dirty piece of timber. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to give you the spec breakdowns on it and then Sinead's going to tell you some of the uh, different reasons people have brought the Gomtaro root cutting saw yep. and uh, what you might use it for should you also get the uh, the privilege of owning one of these beautiful saws. So this one here is what we call the Gomtaro root cutting saw. So if you were in the shops looking for it, um, one of the, the ways you'll be able to tell it's a root cutting saw is obviously the words, <laughs> root cutting saw, it's always <laughs> helpful. Um, and also one of the very special features, if you look at it, is when you take the little plastic protective cover off and you look at the tips of the teeth, now we'll do a close up, you will notice there's like little white sort of foggy looking granules all over the tips of those teeth. So the root cutting Gomtaro saw is the only one that has that. So if you're in a shop and you're like, oh, are they really telling me the truth? Is this really the root cutting saw? Then that's how you're gonna be able to tell that it is the Gomtaro root cutting saw. Otherwise, this looks very similar to a Gomtaro large tooth saw in a 240 length. So yeah, very important that if you're buying a root cutting saw that you actually get the root cutting saw because the standard Gomtaro 240 is not going to cope well yep. in the situations <laughs> we are gonna suggest you use this saw for. So, some of the specs of the root cutting saw is it's only available in one blade length. So, 240 millimeters is the length of the blade, and that is the only blade option, so they don't make it in any other length. Um, it has the same special case that the rest of the Gomtaro saws come in, which is a, a really neat scabbard that allows you to pop it onto a belt should you want to have a belt attachment with it. So, you've got a loop here that you can slide a belt through or it's got the holes that you could put a carabiner or a d-clip on and then hook it onto like the eyelet of your trousers um, or backpack you can also like loop your um your webbing is it called <laughs> through that that belt attachment area and hook it onto your backpack so that's one attachment way you can hold the gontaro root cutting saw alternatively it has these loops here at the base and also, you can't see very well because of the packaging, but here at the top as well, that you can put the leg straps through. So the silky uh, soft Velcro leg straps, that's another way you can attach your Gomtaro root cutting saw. The other thing with this case is it's the really neat design they've made that the saw locks into the case. So that's not gonna fall out on you should you be walking around and having it attached to the body or a backpack or even just carrying it and it flops upside down, it's not gonna come out. Now the way that works is the handle itself has this cool sort of bobbly thing here and then that, that's the technical name for it, <laughs> <laughs> that locks under, we'll turn this around for you, the rollers that are inside this case. Now if this shot isn't working, I know Sinead has a really good one of the rollers so she'll put that up separately. Um, but yeah, that, that bobbly thing locks under those rollers and that's how it stops it from actually falling out once it's locked into the case. Slight trick, we had a customer the other day going, mine fell out. And I said, oh, did you, you know, push it into the case, the handle? Oh no, no, I just dropped it in. <laughs> so it will only stay should you actually lock it in. So make sure you lock that handle in if you want it to stay. Uh, the handle itself is made out of a special gom rubber. Now this rubber is really, really neat and it's patented to silky. Uh, it's a very cool rubber. It just makes holding the handle so comfortable. Absorbs vibrations. Um, if you start sweating, it, it actually gets grippier, it doesn't get slippery, so really, really comfortable, and particularly in Australia at the moment, oh my goodness, it is so hot. <laughs> so yeah, very important point, if I was outside using this today, I am definitely sweating, in fact, I'm sweating inside, and it's air -conned. <laughs> So having this being grippy should you sweat is an important thing. The other thing is with um, the root cutting saw, this is a full tang saw. So that means uh, that the blade continues all the way through into the back of the handle. Now this is really important for strength, isn't it? And here yeah. I am putting the blade in Sinead's face today. She did it to me the other day, so it's payback. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, side point. <laughs> this 
like no, yes. had no grudges. <laughs> no, no, we're holding a grudge. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna give you that because I'm trying to hold Thanks. it between my legs. It's not working. <laughs> um, so yeah, this blade goes all the way through the handle into the back of the handle. And what that does is it gives extra flexibility and strength. So when this blade is moved from side to side, which obviously we don't suggest you do, but it does happen in, in real life, um, it's, it's going to be able to cope with it more because that's bending all the way through, not pivoting on this point here of the blade. So yeah, very important for strength and flexibility and longevity of your saw that it is a full tang. And then the other thing is you see these holes here. So these holes are actually drilled into the blade itself and it gives a bit of ventilation. So when we were talking sweat before, yeah. it allows the hand to breathe a bit and hopefully sweat a little less um, and just far more comfortable. Then the screws here, these are metal screws, so they screw all the way through. So there is absolutely no way that blade is going to come apart from the handle while you're using it, which again is, is safety and long lasting of the saw. Um, and then again, there's a little hole here on the handle that you could put string through or you could put a carabiner through or D-clip again. So really handy little, little sort of features. And then the other thing is the Gontari has a really nice like pistol grip handle, isn't it? It's yeah. really comfortable to hold. And I've got quite a big hand for a woman and I find it quite comfortable. And do you, you find that one comfortable as well to hold? Yeah, I find it very comfortable. Yeah, so it's a nice shaped handle, the Gontari root cutting saw. Um, now with the, the blade itself, uh, it is hollow ground. So they use a, a rounded grinding disc that actually grinds out the inside of that blade. And you can see the lines dug onto the blade there. And that makes the blade much narrower than the teeth. So ideally the hole you're cutting is much bigger. And what that does is it reduces the uh, blade getting caught. And then it also makes it feel a lot easier because you've not got friction of that blade rubbing against the timber that you're cutting. Okay, so why is this a root cutting saw? What makes this saw different from any of the other saws in the Silky range? Or particularly the other saws in the Gomtaro range? Because in the Gomtaro range, they have this exact same saw with the same style of teeth, same style of blade shape, handle shape. Why is this one the root cutting saw and why is it special? Well, what they have done is they've put a special treatment on the tips of the teeth and that white granular stuff I was talking about earlier, that's a big part of that treatment. And what it means is this saw will stay sharp five times longer than any other saw in the silky range. Um, in fact, we have yet to actually talk to somebody who has gone through their blade so that we can know exactly how much work that they've actually done before they've needed a new blade and we've talked to a lot of customers that have done a lot of work with their yes. Gomatari saws <laughs> so yeah you get a long life out of this saw and yeah it's that special treatment that they put on the tips of the teeth that causes the saw to stay sharp for such a long period of time um, important thing to think about though you you would not go out and buy this because it has that treatment and that extra long tooth life because, well, you would think, why not? Why am I going to buy a saw that, that lasts a shorter period of time than this one? Well, the reason is, this treatment that they put on the tips of the teeth does actually make the saw not quite as sharp as the other saws. Yeah. So this one will probably cut better than any other saw you've used, if you've never used a Silky. However, in comparison to the other Silky saws, it's nowhere near as sharp as those ones because of the treatment. So this is the kind of saw you would use if you had a purpose for it, if you had a need for it, and you could use it on general purpose pruning should you want to, but your main purpose for having it would be the uses that Sinead is about to tell you about. Okay, so that's the basic features of the Gomtara root cutting saw. So I'm going to pass it on to Sinead. She's going to tell you what you might do with this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what is the Gomtara root cutting saw used for? So basically it's in the sentence itself, yeah. cutting roots. Um, so this is great for transplanting, digging holes, um, fencing, and cutting suckers off the ground. Mm. So uh, starting off with transplanting, yes. um, especially if you're doing those big tree removals, you want yes. to make sure the roots are fresh and they've got a better ch the best chance of survival when mm. it's moved to its new home. Yeah. Um, so this is where the Gomtara root cutting comes to play. Cause yeah, because I forgot to mention that part, the yeah. style of the tooth. Mm. Six. <laughs> forgot that one. <laughs> so the way the teeth are designed it means that it's going to give the the branch the best cut possible basically mm. so it has that extra chance of survival so we, it doesn't dig lines and grooves yeah. into a really smooth finish so we liken it mm. to like amputating your arm or something you yeah. want the best tools Ooh. to amputate your arm not yeah, a chainsaw the roots to... are like the organs of the tree <laughs> yeah basically so you want the, the plant to have the best chance of survival mm. so 
Yeah, so you're using the gom tire mm. root cutting saw when assisting that removal and making sure it's um, set in its new home, it has the best chance of survival. Yes. Uh, digging holes. Um, yes. <laughs> Don't you use a shovel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you're planting street trees, basically. Yes. So um, you would need, you're cutting into the dirt then. Um, yeah. But there's always lots of roots. Like often, yeah. you know, little plants are planted or trees, their, their roots really spread. So, you know, you might have a job of planting a new plant and there's lots of little roots in that hole, but the yeah. shovel just doesn't cut properly. Especially bamboo, because I noticed, mm, I've learned the yeah. other day with bamboo that literally grows all underground, like yeah. little little chain lines basically. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's where the gobtail root cutting saw mm. is brilliant from removing those um, branches and yes. cutting into dirt. Yeah. So another use for the Gontai root cutting saw is fencing. So why are we talking about fencing? Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna let you need to explain it all because I get a little bit too tongue-tied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it seems odd that we're recommending you use a handsaw when you're fencing. What does that have to do with fencing? Well, we do have a lot of contractors in Australia who do use the root cutting saw because often when you're putting new fencing in, you've got to take the old fencing out. And we often have over here timber fencing. So it'll have a timber post. So the guys have to either dig that post out or cut it off. And cutting it off is a lot quicker than digging it out. Yeah. Um, and often a chainsaw is used for this process, but with the chainsaw, because they're cutting those old posts flush to the ground, the chain's rotating into the soil and the dirt, and so it goes blunt very quickly. So they're having to resharpen that every post or two, which is a very time consuming job. So with the root cutting saw, this one is designed to cope with cutting into the dirt. So much faster to use the saw because you're not going to have to sharpen at every post. And like all silk eggs, it's amazing how quick it cuts. So as I mentioned earlier, not as sharp as a standard silky, but still sharp enough to be impressive. So yeah, brilliant saw if you're cutting old posts off flush to the ground. There we go, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> not. <laughs> so another reason why you would use the root cutting saw is to cut new growth. So I know with olive trees, mm. you can have from the base of the tree um, new yeah, growth. Yeah, little there. suckers pop out of the base of the Yeah, the exactly. Mm. Um, and you can do a quick, easy removal with the commentary saw. So um, this... Yeah, because they're so close to the base of the tree. You, yeah. you, the saw really has to penetrate the dirt when you cut them off. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, basically mm. what you need to set is to be able yeah, to cut into the dirt without mm. saw going blunt. Yes. Um, and again, it's important in that situation to get a nice clean cut. So because, you know, obviously you still want the tree to be growing and be healthy. So to cut those suckers or the new growth off nicely is important and that'll do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the uses for the group, group cutting saw, <laughs> root cutting saw, root cutting saw, <laughs> is the tree roots, um, transplanting, digging holes, um, fencing, mm -hmm. and cutting new growth. And then you were also talking earlier though that it would be great in a bushcraft situation. Oh yes, yeah. so yeah. bushcrafting as well. So if you keep um, collecting timbers from around the river. Yeah, because you know they might have been floating and they've got dirty, you know, rolling in the banks. Yeah, mm. or you come across a branch that is full, filled with um, dirt, so it has like thick bark all the way through. Yeah, the thick bark often holds grit and gravel. Yeah, yeah. so this is another. That's another reason why you would use the mm. root cutting saw to cut that those. Um, yeah. Well, in Australia, they do a lot of spoon carving, oh, yeah. um, and so they're collecting varieties of different timbers to make these spoons. Um, so in that case, they might come across quite a bit of wood that's got the thicker bark that's quite dirty, and you don't want to damage your, your silky because they're a big investment. No, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you yeah. saw a little blunt. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Like how incredibly frustrating. Oh man. <laughs> So maybe, you know, it's worth considering having the root cutting saw if you do that sort of stuff and one of your little folders as well. So you yeah. have those options that if you come across a clean branch that you want to cut and take away, then you can use something like your Gone Boy. Uh, but if you find something that's really dirty or got, like Sinead said, that thicker bark, then grab your root cutting Gone Taro out. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I'm pretty sure that is it for the Gone Taro root cutting saw. Mm. Um, just a quick summary. Yes. It is designed to cut into the dirt, it is designed to cut roots, yes. um, it is designed for anything, those situations, new growth, so yeah. So dirty wood, into the soil, or tree roots, this is the soil you want to have. Yes, exactly. Yes. And the most important thing to remember about this saw is being Japanese, silky, they only cut on the pull strokes. Yeah. So you use it like a normal saw, however you put more pressure on that pull straight towards you and just yes. let that saw glide through the cut. 
um, and this is very important. When you are cutting mm. close to the dirt as well, just remember to start the cut at the handle. Yes. There's more of a chance that you'll be able to do that whole branch in one swipe. Yep. And after you finish using it, clean it with the Easy Spray and spray yep. it with a lanolin spray and it will look beautiful and shiny and keep its edge for such a long time. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for watching our video today. We hope you have enjoyed it. We hope that um, it has explained the purpose of the Gomtaro root cutting saw so that you know if this is the right saw for you. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, but stay for tuned for this week because this Gomtaro family is a very large family. Yes, next week we're going to be talking about more of them. Yes, so yes. you may have heard about this particular saw that we're going to chat about, the general pruning side of things, or you yes. may not, but um, stay tuned. Next week we're talking all about that. And if you like the video, please hit subscribe if you haven't already and like the video and leave us a comment. Yes, talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.